right, YouTube, Nate Dunn, back at again, Mississippi Wrenches. So, this here is going to be part two of the Nissan Maxima. Uh, the first part I showed you was the paint part of it, as far as fixing the trunk and stuff. And to avoid making that video so long and boring, I decided to just go ahead and just cut it in two there. Like I said, can't have the video too long, so we're going to make it into two parts. So, this here is going to be the mechanical part of it. And it's gonna have a little bit of painting in there as well too. Um, Cause what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna do the rims as well. But this job here, it's um, even longer than I expected anyway. Cause it just started off first with just fixing the trunk. And that was about it. Then putting a spoiler on it, then a door panel. Then it came to fixing the window track. And then it came to painting the rims. Then it came to, since it's down there, I ain't never had a tune-up before on it. And it's got like 256 some thousand miles on it. So it needs a tune-up. So I said, okay, sure, we'll get it. We'll get it while it's down here. So hood's up now. So this is gonna be the mechanical aspect of it. I hate that the hood don't really go up as far, but it's all right though. I should be able to get up under there anyway. Until then, I'll show you the setup we got right now. This is the part what I mean by, at least we're gonna be multitasking. So, while the wheels will be drying and all that stuff there, and um, it's gonna be a little fun treat with that right there, with this car here, and I think it's gonna make it look pretty good there. Um, yeah, while those wheels are drying, we're gonna be going ahead, going up under the hood, fixing it up, getting a nice tune up, just something simple that plugs. Uh, like I said, I was gonna say wires, but no, it's, it's too new for wires. Uh, just get the plugs while I'm back there, which I think this is what's going on with this car anyway. Put the new PCV valve in there since I'm already there, which is posi crank case ventilation. You need that to be functioning properly. Like I said, um, dang it. I forgot to get an air filter. Let's just see how this one here looks. I'm probably am gonna run to the store and just put an air filter in. Cause like I said, you might as well do it right. If you're in it, you might as well do it right. So enough talk. Um, let's go ahead and get these wheels cleaned up here and get them ready for paint. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and degrease them with a um, new tool, actually, that I'm real interested in trying. This right here. I wanna see how it's gonna do. We're gonna degrease them really nice and clean. And then I'm gonna sand them, scuff them down, and we're gonna shoot some sealer on it, and we're gonna shoot some paint on it. Yeah. Till then, let's get started. So now, we're gonna focus on the engine while those dry. So let's see what we can get into now. So this job is not difficult there. As you see right now, what I'm doing is there are a row of tins on the front of this intake manifold. They um, deal more like the vacuum lines. So all I'm doing is just loosen those brackets up so I can lay those to the side. And I'll find certain vacuum hoses, like right there for instance. I'm trying to work that loose there. Sometimes those vacuum hoses don't want to come off there. So you have to take a piece of like some pliers and kind of just twist back and forth, back and forth. And I have at some point just took a little lighter and kind of put that around the hose just enough to kind of loosen it up and I can actually pull it off. You might see me do that on this one here. But uh, anyway, I'm going ahead and taking off the air box where the air filter is at. Just go ahead and take that out and move it out the way along with that little intake tube right there. Just take it off the throttle by it. Like I said, remember, try to keep everything somewhat together as much as possible you don't have to take everything piece by piece take it off in bunches or in bulk 
And so now what I thought about it is it's Allen heads for bolts instead of like regular like 10 millimeters or anything like that. I used a, I want to say a T20 or a T25 or a T20, I think it's a T27 actually. It's a T27 I used to take that throttle body off the bolts at least. I just use a ratchet with that um, T27 like I said earlier you saw what I meant by now that little vacuum rail like hoses and all that stuff just lay it to the side there but now I'm using the little ratchet wrench I would rather since it's not an allen head and it's a star bit I would prefer to do it by hand and just use hand power with the uh, ratchet wrench instead of the electric tools because the electric tools will have the tendency if you don't have the right one it will strip that and it'll round it off and you'll be in a big trouble but um i'm just doing it by hand and eventually that throttle body will come off and it'll be good to go now you can leave that throttle body plugged in and i will highly recommend leaving that throttle body plugged in because if you unplug it you probably have the possibility of having to do the throttle body relearn and that whole procedure is just a whole nother animal so I would recommend strongly to leave that throttle body plugged plugged up Now you see it now, so I just got laid to the side right now. And so, right now, that's the filter I was checking it out. I'm just checking, making sure there's no other bolts up underneath that throttle body. And so now I think I'm coming to the meat and potatoes now. So I'm gonna start unbolting the upper intake plenum. And um, like I said, my thing is keeping everything organized as best as possible. Now, this is the easy part here but note you need to watch out there is a extra 10 millimeter bolt actually it's two of them you're just gonna have to figure out which one you want to do but it's a 10 millimeter bolt hidden in that top left hand corner of that um intake manifold if you're looking at this um, video like this right there where you see my hand at there there is a hidden 10 millimeter so right now it's loose but you don't don't snatch it up yet because if you snatch that up you're going to mess up that o2 sensor wire harness so you need to make sure one take the brake booster hose off and there's another the pcb valve hose off and make sure you get that 10 millimeter off you have to get it with a ratchet wrench once you get that off you're laughing
there is another vacuum hose right there behind that throttle body opening right there you're gonna see right there that's what was holding it up a little bit there for me but once I got that off I was laughing <laughs> That was the part I was talking about using a little lighter and the torch to kind of heat it up a little bit so that way it kind of makes it a little bit soft enough for you to twist it off and pull it off and boom like magic and so now I got the upper intake plenum off so right now I'm gonna take the coil pack off and I'm taking the spark plug out and so it's pretty much child's play once you get to this point right here so I'm showing you the spark plug you see where that little spark plug strap is and that little piece of sitting up there this is what it's supposed to look like right here this car was well overdue for a tune-up what I like to do as well too and I have to be careful on some models but when I usually like to do a tune-up I like to put anti-seize on the plugs so that way they don't obviously they don't seize up and so another thing I like to do Thread them in by hand first. Get it to the point to where it's um, flush all the way down there. And once I um, get it right there, and then I put my torque wrench on. And so, well, how I like to do it, I got my torque wrench. I like to do it at 90 degree angles, like that. Then you feel the click. And so, spark plug torque specification is gonna be 14. It's going to be between 14 foot pounds and 22 foot pounds. I wind up just putting it in 19 and just calling it a day. And so, like I said, I'm just going to do the same thing for all these back here in the back. And let's go ahead and have a party. <laughs> So I done done all the spark plugs back there. And so now I'm just going ahead and just knocking that PCV valve out. Um, I didn't have my open end wrench, but luckily I had a pair of pliers handy. And so I literally just gotta keep on just twisting it out, twisting it out. Now these things will cause a lot of engine problems here and cause the engines to act up funny because it's pressure, it's like a pressure valve wise. So it needs to make sure that PCV valve needs to be at functioning. <laughs> that's pretty much just threw it away. And that's new in there. Those PCV valves need to be functioning properly for the engine to run properly. If they start to stop up, you're gonna have a lot of problems. And won't even know it's that, just that little tiny piece. And I just don't go full on Hulk smash on this here. I just kind of get it snug. It's got an O-ring in it as well too. So I kind of get it hand tight as tight as possible. And I just kind of just get one little touch with that um, wire pliers and it's good to go after that. So here I'm just doing the front end now. This one right here is definitely child's play here. But um, yeah, this little clip gave me just a little trouble, but it's all right though. As long as you're persistent, it will fold. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we got that coil out. And like I said, boom, just break the, just loosen the spark plug and just pull it out with the ratchet. Just speed, speed it out, speed it out. And then here's the new one. I'm putting anti seed or well, getting out the box and I'm putting anti seeds on it. As soon as I put the anti seize on, put it back in the block, and let's do some burnouts. <laughs> Thank you.
So I said, while I'm here, I might as well go ahead. And since I got the upper intake off, go ahead and put the new gasket on. It's only right. And this is the part number here I got it from. Got it from Advance Auto. So now I'm right here trying to put the um, PCV valve hose back on along with the uh, brake booster hose back on the upper plenum. I got one hand just put the upper plenum on um, off camera. Well, really, be honest with you, I'm not far. I'm not really far into it right now. I just literally set it up there. And so now, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and put the bolts back on and bolt them up. And the upper intake plenum, the bolts for it there, the torque for those is between 13 and 15 foot pounds. And like I said, um, just do it like a regular head or any other intake manifold. Start from the inside and work your way out so that way you can do it evenly. Or do like a little star pattern if you can, if you can figure out the star pattern. But after that, go ahead and just start hooking up the hoses, the backing lines. And um, start putting those, start um, buttoning up that bracket with the vacuum hose on there. And just keep on doing that. It's kind of tedious a little bit, but it's actually it's pretty quick. It goes by pretty quick. And um, after that, I think next after I do the uh, throttle body. Sorry, I'm kind of stumbling right now. If I do the throttle body next, I believe. You see right now, I'm just kind of snugging those down. Just snugging them down. I ain't going stupid with it just yet. And so now I'm torquing the manifold to about, I think I probably put it at 14 foot pounds of torque. And just kind of just keep it simple. Just keep it right there in the middle. So now I'm just doing a little X pattern, just cinching it on down evenly. And y'all, if y'all don't have a torque wrench, Please be careful and do not tighten these things down. Remember, these are plastic intakes, so they break easy. So you can't really hook down on it. And so also too as well, um, and you're gonna see me do this in a minute. And see all I'm doing is just kind of zipping those down. That's the um, brackets for the vacuum lines. But in a minute when you see me do the uh, throttle body, I never did find a torque value for the throttle body, but one trick I like to do whenever um, I try to not go too stupid with it, but I know it's going to be tight, is whenever I get the ratchet wrench wise, what I would do is put my hand like dead center on top of that, um, of the ratchet head, whatever you want to call it there. I put my hand directly on there. I don't put my hand on the handle. And I know for reference points, at least with me, that if I do that, pretty much just twist it until you can't twist no more using that. And I know for at least a reference, I can probably get with my hand strength, maybe about 12 foot pounds, maybe with that method there. Some people might be able to do it more, but at least you, you'll feel it. You'll feel it and you can't turn no more, at least that way. They're all going to be even. I'm probably going to have to show y'all that one day what I'm talking about. But at least it's all even because you can't turn no more. Like I said, your leverage, you, you just can't turn it. But now I'm going to go ahead and tighten down the throttle body. You see, yeah, matter of fact, this is a good angle. Look at where my hand placement is on that wrench. So I cannot turn it anymore no matter what. Not right there. So that's a quick tip there if you ain't got a torque wrench. And you ain't got to tighten down anything stupid. And you want it to all be about the same. Just put your hand like that on that ratchet wrench. And it works every time.
this here is just a little engine cleaner because I hate to see a dirty engine. It's just my OCD kicking in. So here is the bonus footage I was talking about earlier in the video. So this is that engine cleaner thing you saw me use on the engine beforehand. Right now I'm just kind of using it on the wheels, see if I can degrease them. And um, it's going to take a little minute to get set up there, but it seems like it's doing all right though. Um, I found out this is the <laughs> best way I could use this wheel beat, this Harbor Freight wheel beat buster. Look at my power stance. Look at that. Boom. And boom goes dynamite. So how I did that a lot easier now. I still need to put that plank of wood down to um, make it a lot more stable. But um, there's a little notch on the inside of that rim. That needs to, that tire needs to be up there as much as possible. I need to put pressure on there. And then I need to keep that thing from sliding, so that's all right. I'm gonna do the upgrade of that stand, of that um, bead buster soon. And like I said, you've seen me do this before as well. Um, grind down the sides with a grinder to knock off the curb rash before we get ready to paint it. You're gonna see it in a minute. It's nice and smooth, real nice and smooth, like a hallway with baby oil on it. And this is what it's like beforehand. So it was just kind of nasty curb rash, but it's all right though. We feel make it look pretty good now. And so anyway, like I said, that Harbor Freight tire bead buster. This is also those um, that J tape. I call them wheel skirts, so that way I can uh, mask up the wheels a lot better. I think I did that in um, an earlier video I done the um, how to paint chrome wheels. And I, and I referenced this here along with that Harbor Freight bead buster. And so now you see they're really in action. And this just makes masking up wheels a dream. Like I said, this makes it a dream. Boom, it's already masked up now. All I gotta do is kind of just bring it together and tape it up to where it don't fly all over the place. And then the uh, cleanup of it, just pull it off and you're good. But, um,. Like I said, it's uh, called J-Tape. I'll see if I can try to put a um, picture or a link in the description. I'm going to try to. I can't promise you that, but I'll try to, though. Um, yeah, literally just tape it around. Just keep it from flying around. And that's them all masked up. And so anyway, y'all see me do this plenty of time, but most of the, this bonus footage was just to show you the J-Tape with the wheel masking and the bead buster in action. Um, like I said, I got torque specs at the end of this video right here, so that way y'all can actually pause the video and y'all can actually look at, look at the torque specs I looked up online. But um, anyway, though, I really hope you like the content. See this the rims here. It's kind of black chrome look there. And I really hope y'all like the content. Like, comment, subscribe, please share the video. I really would appreciate your support. Until then, stay busy and have fun. I have fun with this part of the project here. <laughs> but uh, also the torque spec of the lug nuts are 85 foot pounds. So make sure you make sure you get those lug nuts torqued properly. You see it right there at the top. Until then, stay busy and have fun.